What's up, guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi panel with yours truly, of course, this Garander. And today we're going up against Nicholas, are known as Sheik on Twitch. And um, yeah, this was a very, very interesting battle. I'm not gonna lie, because I'm using some weird stuff. My opponent is definitely bringing some unique things, and it turned out to be quite an interesting battle because of that. Uh, just looking through my opponent's team, we've got Dragonier, Gramble, Valplume, Flareon, Sandslash, and of course. Samurott. I myself is using Dedene, Flareon 2, um, Golurk, Wormadan, the grass or plant trashy uh, something form, and of course Nifberg, the agility sniper set, and of course a Mighty Anna, which is uh, the quick feed set. Basically, a set with me first and whatnot. And yeah, just basically, we are going up against a team that has a possibility of being very, very chunky. Um, not really a fast team, but more more defensively inbound and hard hitting. My team is more in that fashion. I have at least two walls, and um, other than that are a lot of hard hitters, a lot of fast hard hitters. So I need to overpower my opponent to have a chance here. I can't let him uh, have the momentum, and I really can't stall him out. There is no way I could pull something like that off. I really need to keep the pressure up and basically hope that things kind of fall apart so a lot of our predictions is needed here and from the get-go i'm just gonna start with dna i'm feeling sand slash could be a lead but even so i think i could be in a good position even if that were to happen so with all this mind guys let's go so i do get them um, i would say good matchup here he is gonna start with the samurath and samurath of course is uh, well <laughs> it's not gonna like taking a choice banded uh, wild charge and even though I knew he had um, the Sand Slash, I was thinking he might or predict and stay in, thinking I go for the likes of U-Turn. So I decided to go for Wild Charge. Sadly, you know, joke's on me here because, well, of course, he gets to set up the self procs freely. And uh, that's a thing, you know, I'll have to deal with that. And uh, I'm gonna go into Dasilu and basically trying to take, or rather, I was hoping for um, the, um, the self procs. But obviously, it went for knockoff there, and, you know, that's fine. It really is, because at least I don't have to worry too much about uh, switch-ins. She's going to be Flame Post, and I went for the aggressive play of Leaf Storm. But, well, Flaren has, you know, that natural 110 special defense, and uh, yeah, that that is that is terrible. That it obviously did not work. It definitely didn't go with that fashion I was really hoping for, and I am forced to switch out. Uh, this, by the way, this Wormland is specially oriented, so that damage was really pitiful. So, now I do predict something like a Will-O-Wisp or anything like that, so... Uh, since it's showing me the leftovers, which means it's kind of a defense, it says I come in freely to Meltdown and um, go for free Facade if I decide to. And I have no reason to go for a Flare Blitz as of right now. Facade is the safer move because it could bring uh, Samurai up to that, and that is a situation I'm not really feeling. Now, I will say this, Granville is probably fully defensive, and this Facade breaks it apart. That is easily 40% HP. So a Flare Blitz is definitely in range of taking him out, and uh, I was forced to go for Flare Blitz. It was either that or switch out, and uh, he just stay in, and that's great. He could easily switch down to his Flareon, and like I said, I am at minus one right now. So that is just incredible to see really Gramble falling down. Uh, Gramble is such a good Pokemon in you, and I had no idea it could be break the Sunder with a right combination with the Flareon. So anyway, the Samurai is gonna come. And sure, I could risk the facade, but at the same time, um, he could pack the Aqua Jet. I'm not feeling Aqua Jet. So I'm basically going to Actros and hoping to take that. He will actually pull a double switch, which was something I definitely didn't see coming. And sadly, Sand Slash is gonna come. And I do have packed a U turn. And with that damage, that is just wow, that's so low. It's so low. And I'm, of course, forced to switch out, like I said there. And I'm actually going to go back to Meltdown, predicting, of course, the Stealth Rocks. Quite an aggressive play from my side, but at the same time, uh, I really had no other choice. It was either that or bring Wormadan again, but Wormadan is, well, I want to save that for another situation. So I am free yet again to go for those facades, but I do decide to go for Flare Blitz, hoping that the stab alone is enough to take on the Sand Slash. And what do you know? We take it out! I had no idea, I was really sure I was gonna fall there, but the recall damage puts me in, you know, the worst kinds of position. I do live with a slither of health, 
but at the same time he's gonna bring his flame post probably predicting you know I was predicting a quick attack here uh, just go for a facade and what do you know he doesn't have the quick attack and his flare is gonna go down as mine do of course because hey it's just how it is but Flareon or Meltdown you know good job buddy good job so anyway I gotta go to Nifberg um, I have no reason to go for agility really I just need to play aggressive here and uh, Dragonier usually packs Thunder Wave and uh, that was a situation I really didn't like but at the same time I had no reason to really switch out I gotta hope for that cross poison hit crit and yes the damage is here and the Dragonair almost dies because of that, which was incredible. So anyway, Wolf, or Wolf is gonna come in. And of course, like um, Flareon, it does pack the Toxic Orb. And uh, it's basically a sweeping kind of set. It hasn't really been working for me, but at the same time, Quick Fit makes it quite unique. Uh, those extra 120 speed makes it really, really fast. And I basically get the chance to dent a few things. Uh, not having Mox, of course, is um, actually kind of bad, and it's something I come to re terms with that I probably need that. And that, of course, that the Samurai really takes that facade a bit too well, much better than I thought it would. And I'm in a situation here where I probably have to follow this thing. Uh, I don't like it, I don't like it one bit, but at the same time, I get the chance to use me first. Sadly, my opponent used rest. I wanted to steal the um, X-Sister to retaliate that back before going down, but yeah, that was that was bad. So this set of course is fully, 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 fully defensive, and Samrod is really, as of the situation as of right now, I am, well, not really in that good of a position. So I'm gonna bring Nifberg, I really hope that, you know, across Poison should definitely gent it, um, but I need a crit to that to happen, but I don't get it. And this Samurai will of course pack the Sleep Talk, which means that its full set is Waterfall and Exister, and he will score the Waterfall, and that is one dead Nifberg, or what do you call it, Ariados. And yeah, that's bad, that's bad. I was still feeling that, you know, I have an honest chance, but I really need to bring Dedene or Rakdos into this. And uh, yet again, I do not make an over prediction here. I knew we still had a Vile Plume, but I was thinking I could probably risk it and try to stay in, hoping that I went for a U-turn. Uh, he doesn't make that call, and now I'm just gonna kiss this Vile Plume right in the face, and he's gonna affect with that kiss and go to retaliate with a Sludge Bomb. And I knew that, or rather, it was kind of inbound that that was gonna happen. So I had a decision to make. I knew that my Golurk would be able to outspeed because it is a Rock Polish set. So basically, here I was gonna take this Sludge Bomb bring a dynamic punch to his face and hopefully hope that that thing hurts itself in confusion dank me with Wormadan and finish it off with a psychic that was my idea uh, but as it stands right now um, Valprum can definitely recover a lot of HP with the Giga Drain on me and I knew that but I knew I could survive one Giga Drain and probably retaliate if so with uh, an earthquake before going down so like you see the dynamic punch is definitely not doing a whole lot it really isn't but the confusion is here and what do you know those 50% is gonna come back and bite him, and there is one hurt Valplume. Now the Black Sludge, of course, does recover that, and we're not out of the woods yet, we really isn't. And I'm basically gonna eat you here, really, really doing damage, that was all I thought. And, um, yeah, Lady Luck is on our side, and we score a crit here, which of course is terrible, because that means that we pretty much won this game. Uh, Samrod can't stop DNA, and Samrod can definitely not stop my Wormadan. And it's gonna come down to this very very fine situation where we're basically gonna watch this thing sleep talk. I just went for the mag punch. Basically, you know, I really wanted to fall here. I just I wanted to finish it off with a bit of A. And um, even in its sleep, it finds the ability to hurt itself, which is um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. But yeah. Um, as it stands right now, I'm just gonna go for EQ. I feel DQ is in range now. Take it out. I'm don't see the reason not to do that and um, I guess you should say sadly it probably does around the same amount as the dynamic punch kinda did and of course he gonna break through the confusion and go for the waterfall and that is one dead Golurk so this Samurai definitely caused a trouble for me and had not that dynamic punch against the Vileplume kinda kicked in and uh, made him hurt himself confusion plus the crit 
I really don't know how this game would have ended. It would have been close at least, because my last two Pokemon are two weak pokes. But um, yeah, they're definitely shown their brawn, and I'm so glad I get to use this freaking dead day. It's so cool. I love it so much. And it just, it's, it's one of those, it's so bad, it's good, because people aren't just, they aren't really know how to deal with it properly. It just then teams because of that. Um, and uh, Sheik, I really want to thank you for this battle. I thought it was a very good one, and uh, it came down pretty close. And I'm sorry about the hacks, really, but like I said, it was a very nice game, so thank you so much. So, yeah, I mean, wow. This game was actually, it came down pretty darn close. Um, like I said, I had a good idea to begin with, uh, but it came down to that the post I had left had not enough juice in them to kind of break the last part of it. Samurai definitely showed uh, that uh, I was definitely prioritizing this game whole wrong, and it survived very long in that battle because of that. And basically, Flareon was my go-to Pokemon. I took down three of his Pokemons. But after that, I had a very few Pokemon that could really gen this team. And uh, yeah, while I do win, it is by, it's like I said, it's pretty darn close to that loss. And it basically came down to if the Samurott could keep going and if the Valpon could cover it enough to me winning. And I think Goldurk solved that for me, luckily. Uh, so Jake, thank you, like I said, for that battle. If everybody has been watching, thank you for doing just so. Remember to leave a like, of course. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, guys, the sky's limit, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.